what is intellectual property and what am I going to talk about? Well, it's for a stock company, it's the intangibles. I tend to think of it as a tangible asset, but it's called intangibles on the book, on the balance sheet. And it is considered something that is hard to value, so they put it in the intangibles. A few years ago, up to 80% of stock value was in the intangibles in the company. <coughs> Lately, that has decreased and decreased significantly. And I'm not sure what the actual percentage are. But 30 years ago, it was only 20% or 30% of the company was in intangibles. And then it shifted. And there was a lot more value being appropriated to the patents and intellectual property and other intangibles in the company. I am going to be talking mostly about patents. That's what I've been working on making deals on. And what goes along with patents when you do a patent sale, which is what we call know-how, show-how, how you demonstrate how to use that patent in a potential product. Also, the prototypes you might create. There are also other types of intellectual property that are defined by the US PTO Patent and Trademark Office, which is the next one, trademarks. Coca-Cola, trademark, Pepsi, trademark. Uh, some things that have been notorious in their example is Kleenex was once considered a paper tissue, then it became the name for the category. That lost its trademark capability. Uh, but that doesn't happen all the time. You would wish it might. Um, copyrights. Uh, most software is protected by copyright. And those are other specific laws. These are things that you would have specific attorneys to deal with in a very large company. Sometimes just one attorney dealing with all of this for a company in a very small Trade secrets. The Coca-Cola formula has been a trade secret for over 100 years. What does that mean to that business now? I think that it's the hype more than what the actual formula is. It's been kept secret for a long time. They say there are only two people that know about it. They use it in their ads. It has a lot of intellectual capital value to that company because they use it in their advertising. Today, I'll talk a little bit about how trade secrets can be a better way and more cost-effective way of protecting your children. Invention disclosures. This is the first part of the step of once you have an inventor working in your R&D center or in your company, it has the eureka moment when they identify that they created something that no one else did before. Then they have to start the documentation trail within the company, submit an invention disclosure to usually a committee which I've chaired in various companies that determines whether the company wants to pursue that invention with some legal protection, whether to keep it as a trade secret, go for a patent application, where to go for a patent application, certain things like that. Um, other things that can be considered part of your intellectual assets, more than just intellectual property, are client lists, and business manuals, presentations. Uh, there is actually several companies who have actually made money by selling their business manuals of how they do business to other people in situations like maintenance programs, uh, software documentation. IBM at one time created a database of all the intellectual property created in the country, which has since, since become a company. And that was actually software and business manuals and methods as to how they kept track of that, that intellectual property.